So that's a problem. We're out here in the uh, in the middle of the Ochako wilderness, and and this Toyota uh, zigged when it should have zagged, and luckily got stopped by this tree here, and now I gotta get it out of here. It's uh, amazingly it didn't roll, and all the wheels and tires are still aired up and on it. I didn't stop and get the keys on the way here, so it's not gonna like roll, but we got the wrecker up there. We're gonna get it positioned, get some stuff hooked up, and see if we can drag this up out of here. So I'm sure in the camera it doesn't look steep because in the pictures we were sent it didn't look steep, but well, it's not like the steepest thing ever, but it's not nothing. So I'm gonna get this positioned and Pull that out of there. Okay, so we got a bridle made up with a big endless loop. Double line up to the wrecker. We'll anchor it in and see what it does. Here, put some tension on the passenger side to support the boom. There, the boom's tensioned. Now we'll pull in on the driver. Once we get it in line some, we'll raise the boom up to get better lift on it, but we need to get a little more in line with the boom first so we don't pull the tow truck over. Or we just pull it right where it's at, because it's working. It's always the last bit over the top's the hardest. And of course there's a rock right there that that front tire's gonna hit. And a pile of brush. And yeah, all four wheels are locked up. We didn't put it in neutral or anything like that. In the case there's a rigging failure or something, it doesn't go rolling down the hill. See if it'll stay there. Yeah, it stays. See how stable it is. It'll stay. Let me look what I have for room up here. Yeah, I can wiggle out of that.
It almost would have been easier now to grab the back end with the wrecker and spin it up this way. Might be the way to go. Instead of pulling it up over here. I'm going to reposition this. Just be careful in case that starts to go. Which it shouldn't, but dumb things happen. Throttle down. Down this way. I'm gonna go through the rim. You gotta turn around, drag up this way. Yeah, it'll probably end up back in facing uphill. And then I don't think we're going to need that shackle now. Bring it right to the road. That snatch block is asking for some grease. It's on the road. That's the second time in a row I hooked that to the wrong part.
you go here. Alright, we'll grab that strap off and figure out how we're going to leave. Hey, let's see if we can straighten the steering wheel. Would be a big help. This is RJ, by the way. I don't think I said Hi, that guys. yet. RJ's helping out a lot. Well, that makes me happy. Is it in, uh, it's probably electronic shift huh, for four wheel drive. Yeah, but it's got a lock I can. Well, we'll find out in a sec. I, can I was hoping I could wait to dolly it until we get up there and turned around. Where's my freaking strap? I think I took it out. I used it on my other truck the other day. Yeah. We'll just use way too big of a strap. Yeah. Because overkill is just enough. Okay. Now we will use this way too long a strap. I kind of want to tow it down the road forward to like go actually down the highway because I don't want to blow that camper shell off and that happens. That's what I'm thinking. We'll just we'll tow it like this up here to turn around because we're not going to hurt the transfer case at low speed on these roads. So we'll get up, turn okay. around, and back to good road. Then we can put it on. We can flip around. I mean, that would all depend on if we even had it locked in. I mean, we'll find out. Yeah, we'll see real quick. Yep, it's locked in. Dang it! It's locked in four-wheel drive. That's what I was afraid of. I mean, we can dolly it right here. Might just have to do that. But then I gotta set the dollies up twice. We could dolly it right here. Okay. That just means dollying it twice, but that's okay. Because maybe if we do this, then everybody will stop asking me what the little wheels on the back of my tow truck are for. <laughs> maybe. Probably not. I doubt it, yeah. Yeah, I don't want to tow it backwards down the highway because those are known for Bouncing? blowing off in the wind. Good time. So that drops into that last pocket there. You scoot this out and swing that into that last pocket. Ah, nice. And then kick in. And we flip these two latches and then go get the breaker bar.
50 ratchets. And we lock them. I'm gonna walk down this nice trail I made and get the stuff. Let's go turn around. Right. Okay, there is a turnaround up here. That's good. I mean, it's not as big as it looked on the Google, but. You could almost reposition up here. Oh, and just go around the other side and tow it out the other way? Yeah. That's not the worst idea I've ever heard. It's a big enough area you can do it right now. You don't have yeah, because I could just park this right here in the middle. I could do it right here. Just in time as the rain is starting to come down. Um, so I strap the dollies. We're getting the hood strapped down so that it doesn't blow up over. Yes, we could have towed it backwards how it was on here, but you're risking the camper shells blowing off. They're not made to take that blast of wind. The two things that will happen is one wind will get in all these holes right here and uh, either flip this up and shatter it, of course or turn that into a parachute and blow it right off the track because the clamps inside are made to not take that kind of wind blast. They don't have a cab in front of them. So as slow as this truck is, and since we're mainly going to be on middle of the forest, nowhere roads, it'd probably be fine. But the correct thing to do was to put in the extra work and turn it around. So that's what we did. Oh, wow. You put way more effort into that than I would have. There you go. Awesome. Let's roll. All right, so now we get to drive back down the mountain. It's a little muddier. Um, thanks to some rain. It looks like it's raining more down here than we got up there. But uh, I put the truck in four-wheel drive so that we have the front end helping us slow down. Because one thing I remember, when you're towing a vehicle with a tow truck, you're pulling a basically loaded trailer with no brakes. Yeah. And you don't even have your front brakes really because your front end has no weight on it because yeah. it's teeter-totter. So you have essentially only the back brakes of your own vehicle to slow you down. So don't like pull out in front of tow trucks because we like can't stop that good. So by putting it in four-wheel drive, when I hit the brakes, it's slowing all four wheels down together even if the front doesn't have traction. That stops the front from skidding, like locking up and skidding, especially like going into a turn like this and just going straight because the front end locked up and didn't turn basically turn into a toboggan at that point. Yep. So do I need four-wheel drive to go down the hill? No. Do I need four-wheel drive to not go down the hill too fast? It helps. Hold up, let me explain my thinking here for just a little bit. So, coming down the hill, got the 360 camera on the stick outside the truck, getting a nice shot from down low. And I look and I see like, oh, that's gonna be a beautiful view over there. If I just slowly start raising that 360 camera up, then in the edit I can pan over, over the truck and just show this nice view out over the valley. It's gonna look so good. So that's what I did. And then uh, I, I was looking at the view too, so I didn't see the tree coming and then this.
I didn't see that one. <laughs> Ooh. That tore up the lens pretty good. I didn't have a lens protector on. This is the bad side. This is the good side. I'm turning the camera around. You can't see that though. Ooh. Yeah, I just jacked up the lens. My bad. Okay, no more. No more 360 camera. <laughs> so I just realized. Why did I put it back in its protective little case so that I don't scratch the lens when I just destroyed, just destroyed. Both, both lenses? I don't know if that's repairable or not. You just yard sale it through a tree. Yeah. Well, it's bouncing across the gravel, got it. I don't, the, the lenses are not like interchangeable because I don't have lens covers on it. Oh. So I don't know if that's repairable or if that was a $700 screw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a, uh, that's gouges into that lens. This one's not bad, but it's got one right there. Oh yeah. That bottom one's nice. <laughs> yeah. That one's definitely food bar. I never said I was good at this. <laughs> We have made it back to the paved road. We're gonna tow this thing, there it is, back to town. And the funny part, out of four wheel drive, is we're taking it to a body shop to get an estimate. Um, I'm fairly certain I know what the estimate is. Yeah. <laughs> but the insurance company wants it to go to a body shop, even despite what it looks like. So it's going to a body shop. You think they're going to be happy to see this roll in or just tell us not to even unload it? They didn't tell us not to unload it, we're pretty certain. We'll see. So update, we just got the, the truck dropped off at the body shop and they're, they had no problem with it. They, they said right. they'd take care of it. They got cool Jeeps sitting out front. Crimeville body and paint. They didn't even blink at how bad that thing looked. So that was cool. And uh, we got it dropped off and I don't have to tow it all the way home or to somewhere else. And uh, that is going to be it for this one. So thanks for helping, RJ. Of course. Thank you guys for watching. And we'll see you uh, on the next one. So Insta360, if you want to help a, a struggling YouTuber out, I could really use another X3. It's really nice, I really like it, and I screwed it up, my bad. <laughs>